to talk about the Piezo Wave 2. It's a tool that we brought into the clinic uh, as, to help with certain conditions, uh, specifically what we call like uh, tendonitis enthesitis. And theses are where the bone or the tendon, uh, or the, bone, the bone tendon interface or the ligament ten, uh, bone interface. So where ligaments or tendons go into the bone, you get this interesting uh, matrix of, of, of uh, connective tissue and bone. And, and it's, a, very, it's a, a place that if you have a problem there, you get inflammation there, you get an injury there. For example, any rotator cuff problem, this is why rotator cuff surgeries take so long to heal from, uh, but also like from car accidents or chronic posture, postural adaptations. So we have a patient here who has a neck problem and a very rigid lower neck. And the, the antheses, or the uh, bone tendon interface, bone ligament interface, where these muscles and these tendons and these ligaments go in, into that bone, it becomes very rigid and very hard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our glorified massage gun. Uh, the thing is, is that the, this apparatus here produces a sound wave. Uh, it's much lower frequency than the typical diagnostic ultrasound or therapeutic ultrasound that you typically see in physical therapy. So this is not covered by insurance. Um, but it does create a sound wave that's lower frequency. And the lower frequency, whether that's electricity or sound, the lower frequency something is, the deeper that it goes. Now, you can see that there's a semi, there's a crescent to this, right? And so we use these uh, gel pads, and I'm just gonna take one apart. Okay, so you can see that we've sprayed uh, basically an ultrasound gel in between here, right? I'll put a little more on there to make sure we have a good a good connection here because we want that sound wave to go into that gel uh, pad and then uh, so we have to make sure we have plenty of connection lubrication because it just makes sure that the most sound goes in there okay so now then I'm gonna put some of that on the patient as well so here we go now here's the other thing about choosing this I also choose the one that I want basically if we if we do this we can see what depth this is going to go to. So I don't want that depth. I want a flatter depth. So you can see that that has a little bit more uh, depth to it. Let me give that visual to you versus this one. But even that one for this patient is not what I really want. I want her to go deep. Now it's going to go into her neck just probably just fine, but I want to make sure that I can get deep enough. So I'm going to use a, a really flat one and I'll just, and I will alter the frequency that the number of times it hits per second and the, uh, and the intensity to make sure that I uh, don't cause too much pain. Now, here's here's the caveat: is that these sound waves, uh, in general, just pass right on through and don't don't cause a problem. Um, they'll bounce off the they'll bounce off the bone, right? So it'll go through the tissue. They'll bounce off the bone. Let me make sure my goop is good and distributed. Okay. So <clears throat> they they. The sound wave will, will go. Will, will the sound wave will travel through and hit the bone and then bounce back off? The thing is, is that there's anything in here that's somewhat rigid, other than the bone. The bone's hard enough to just reflect the, the sound. But those bent bone tendon interfaces or those bone ligament interfaces, it the, the sound wave will actually go down into with the because it'll follow along the connective tissue into the bone. So it can the energy can build up there. So this goes much deeper than a, than any therapeutic ultrasound that most physical therapists work. It's gonna go clear down to the bone. It's generally gonna go into that interface and then come back out of it. It can travel along, for example, if I were going into the shoulder and in between a couple of bones, if I aim it in there, I can actually have the sound waves bounce off the bones and go deep in there. So the reason we're using this glorified massage gun is because this massage gun doesn't get tired, doesn't have a mechanical action to it. There's no mechanical action to it. And, so, and it can fire those sound waves without getting tired and then we can angulate them to get, and then we move around. Now this is a, a, a normal therapeutic ultrasound. You have to continue to move because the energy builds up too quickly. This one, we only move it once we find one of those inflammatory areas. And we mostly are going to find that by a deep achiness. You're gonna get a little bit of a deep ache. Um, you don't want too much of an ache, but you want enough ache. So there should be some pain involved, enough to let the patient know, hey, this is working. It's where we want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna use my handy dandy gel here. And I'm gonna kind of go into here because she has uh, just, you know, and I'll, I'll probably be pulling her shirt back just a little bit more to get that uh, onto her shoulder blade, onto her spine is really what I'm gonna be interested in. Uh, I, there's gonna be some clicking and noise. Um, I will turn that on and off so I can describe things. But really I want to get this, there we go, 
then I'm going to preempt this and put it on. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to preempt the machine. I, I've got my setting. I started at a pretty low setting because I want to make sure that I, I get. Now, unlike regular therapeutic ultrasound, you don't actually rub this around except for a little bit as they get aching, but it's much less than a traditional ultrasound. So the, now the important part is that I keep this uh, perpendicular line that's on that gel pad perpendicular to the surface I'm trying to hit. So you're gonna see I'm gonna go like this, but sometimes I'll do that. But really, I, I, and I need feedback from the patient as to what she's feeling and what we're getting. So we're gonna start this. I'll be mainly communicating with the patient to get what we feel. So. Uh, patient, you're going to feel maybe something, maybe nothing. So let's see, because I have it fairly low. So here, here we go. There's going to be some clicking. And you can hear the rhythm and rate that I've set. It's medium. I can go higher than that. And you can see, I don't need to move around. She's not complaining because people complain right off the bat. You feel anything, patient? You don't feel anything, do you? No. Yeah. Okay. So again, like I said, in order to be truly useful. There's two ways that I can build the intensity. I can raise the number of times it fires. So I can take that all the way up to eight times per second here. You can hear that. And again, my patient still does not feel anything. She's like, mm, okay, sound nice, nice toy, pal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to do is we're going to increase that intensity. And of course, of course, I'm making sure that I pay attention. No. You feel a little funky. Something. Just poking. Just poking, yeah. See? No pain. No pain. So it's not achy yet, no but some, po some poking. Now, part of it is, is I have to go slow enough and I have to let the, the, the pressure, the, the, uh, the energy, build up on the tissue. Now, I'm going to give her a couple more. Feel anything particular with that? Now I'm going to go hunting, right? Because I've got it up fairly high and she's like, eh, I don't really feel anything. Let me push around. Do I get anywhere where I get, like if I come over here, if I come over here, not a whole lot. Okay, so. That felt good. <laughs> now, when you say it felt good, what do you what do you feel in there? Um, kind of like a deep massage almost? Relief. Yeah, so it relieves the tension in the bone because it's, yes. it's going to, be, it's, it's where the connective tissue is at Demetis that it's good, that the energy is going to absorb. She's going to say, hey, that, that actually feels better. So sometimes people have a, spasms or injuries to muscles or tendons or ligaments or bone ligament, um, bone tendon interface, the antheses. And so they'll go, oh yeah, that feels good there. Keep, keep doing that there. And that's what we're looking for. I'm going to give her two more. And you can hear that the machine changes its timber a little bit there. Now, what do you think about over here? Do you, you get anything over here now? Relief right on the bone. Right on the bone. And, and this is really what this piezo wave is all about is you can see, I'm not having to do a whole lot of work. There's not gonna be any damage to her skin. There's no pressing red marks or stuff like that. But yet we're getting this energy down at the bone where we want that change to be. And the nooks and crannies of the bone, that's that's the beauty of it. And it's just the energy, the sound wave energy, keeps building up and relaxes the tissue. So that's really what we're, our, that is the whole reason we brought this piezo wave in. Now this is the same piezo wave that they use for lithotripsy um, uh, in order to break up uh, calcium stones in the ureters or the, or the, or the kidney. So it's, it's effective. That relief there is penetrating down the spine. So you feel that shoot kind of come down here. Not that far, but, but yeah, some level. Right so there. you feel it coming down and that's exactly what we're looking for. So we know we have our therapeutic level of intensity and frequency and where I'm at. Now you can see I'm just sitting there. So this isn't a rub, rub, rub like a traditional ultrasound. This is more of a set it, there might be some moving, and you can see I'm exploring still, like I'm gonna come up that neck. That feels great. Yeah, see, and she really likes that. She goes, wow, that's like the best massage ever. <laughs> I'll give you an hour to stop doing that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what we're looking for. And, and this way it's not, I don't have to sit here and work the patient over and really stretch her and, and damage the tissue that's between me and where the problem is, and I can get right down to the, the problem area. So some people just have these advanced chronic problems that. It's very difficult to treat. And that's why we brought this machine in. We really brought that in for these sorts of problems so that we could um, address those things more directly with less of a hands-on. And the problem is, like say for me, I could work this area over, but I'm going to fatigue within about five minutes, right? I can't, I, you Not know. Not you, Neil. I know. Even with the strongest of hands, 
you know, the, the therapist will fatigue. So no one can give this kind of a deep tissue release for this kind of time. And this, and like, and like, as the patient said, she said, when went, yeah, it goes right down to the bone. I feel this relief, this immediate relief. And it's like, yes, like, oh, that, that really feels good. Like it's doing something down where I need that done. So the, for those people who are always telling the therapist or whatever, saying, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. This is exactly what we would suggest is coming in uh, using the piezo wave. Um, now here at the clinic, Darshita knows how to use the uh, piezo wave. In fact, it was her idea to bring it in. Thank you, Darshita. Uh, I can do that for you. And then also Matt, we have our uh, yoga exercise specialist. He also is trained on how to use this. Uh, and, and we've been doing this quite a while now for several months. So we're, we've gotten down the techniques pretty well. And you can see that I also apply a bit of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So even for, you know, there might be some therapist out there saying, hey, I got a piezo wave, but I don't get as good of a result with it. Some of it is the pressure and hold and the build up the intensity. So even, and then you have to educate your patient. Okay, you know, patient, I make sure I'm in the right place. If I'm in a place that you don't feel anything, say, oh, keep moving. That's not doing anything. Or if I hit a particularly great place, say, hey, stop right there. Now, now I am oh, gonna, that's there you go, right there. And I'm just gonna sit there until she tells me to move because as I said, those, those sound waves keep bombarding that area with energy. And I put a little pressure down into the, into the uh, implement to get, to get a little deeper and closer. And remember which level of gel pad I use. I use that a deeper gel pad because I really wanna get into the nooks and crannies of the bones there. Because the spine has a lot of nooks and crannies with the way that it connects there. If you look at a, a picture of the back of the spine, you'll see so many little nooks and crannies and ligaments and tendons and muscles and even, uh, you know, and things that entrap nerves, things that really uh, just constantly get irritated and cause a lack of oxygen. Aching comes from lack of oxygen. So any of the stuff that does that, oh, she's hating it. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> But see, that's just it. That's really what this is for. Is you just can't give a massage deep enough. And for those patients who have that chronic, like, yeah, can you just really get in there? This is what we use. And, we, and, it, and it's done is damaging to the patient or to us. So, so if this is something you'd be interested in, come on, come on, go on over to our website, and you can schedule with Matt or myself or Darshita.